Hey, what's going on YouTube? Alabama Reloader here. So uh, what I want to do today is just do a quick walkthrough of the trigger modification that I made to this Savage Axis rifle. Now, I posted a short, a YouTube short, 15 seconds long, talking about the difference in the trigger pull weight that I was able to achieve. And what I want to do is kind of walk you through that because, uh, of course, Savage, I mean, they, they've got... It seems like a million different models of this exact same rifle, right? That's one thing. I mean, Savage, if you can't find a Savage rifle that fits in your budget, then you're just not looking hard enough because, I mean, they literally cover the entire spectrum of budget and cost for people that are looking to, to purchase a rifle from the very most basic budget models all the way up to as much as you want to spend you know, they've got something for you. So this is a Savage Axis. It's chambered in 243 Winchester. This belongs to my cousin's husband. We were at a family dinner um, and he was just talking about, you know, getting ready for deer season coming up and, and wanting to get out to the range and shoot his rifle. But he wasn't, he just wasn't super happy with it. Um, I guess we'll say that's probably just the best way to put it. Uh, and he had, it, we were actually talking about if he was going to purchase something else, what should he get? 6.5 Creedmoor, 308, you know, we were talking about cartridges and so, yeah, all of that fun stuff. And I will talk about that all day long if that's what you want to talk about. So I enjoy that kind of stuff. But I asked him what he had um, and he was like, hey, I've got a Savage. It's, uh, you know, bolt action rifle in 243. I've got it out in the truck. You can take it home with you if you want and see if you can come up with a good load for it, which I was obviously happy to do that. Um, so that's kind of the, the plan for this project. But one of the first things that I kind of look at when I, I get a rifle like this, or even if I go purchase one or something like that, especially used, you know, I just want to kind of give it a once over, check out the trigger, uh, the fitment of the barrel into the stock and how all that works. If it's supposed to have a free floated barrel, obviously it needs to be free floated, that type, those type of things, right? Just some general common things to, to kind of start with that can help improve the accuracy potential of the rifle, the accuracy potential. The key word there is potential, right? Because the person pulling the trigger has a whole lot of influence on how accurate the rifle actually is. There are some things you can do to improve the potential of the rifle, but unless you get out and actually shoot it and put time in at the range, then yeah, that's, that's, that's me starting to rant. So I'll stop there because this is supposed to just be a trigger mod video and it's turning into not that. Um, so what you're gonna need is a four millimeter hex key and you, pretty much these are already extremely loose because I've already un, you know, loosened them up quite a bit. It's hard to do this uh, you know, one-handed as I'm holding my phone trying to video. So I've already broken these loose. Um, and. And I, I had an extra trigger just kind of sitting around. I thought about just kind of showing you guys with that trigger, just hoping that you could visualize what I was talking about. But at the end of the day, I don't really think that'd be that great of a video. So I just want to walk you through it again. This is the Savage Axis. This is the non-Accu Trigger version, okay? That's kind of, that that's part of this video that people need to understand because I actually on that reel that I posted, somebody commented and said that, they have the Savage Axis, but it's got the Accu Trigger, and they were confused uh, about, hey, I thought they all had the Accu Trigger, which they do not. This applies to the non-Accu Trigger version, and then also I believe it's the Savage Edge. Uh, I don't know if they still produce those or not. Uh, that might be an older uh, rifle, I'm not 100% sure on that. Again, there's a million different models of these rifles, so you have to go do a lot of research on that, figure out what's what they still produce and what they don't produce. Uh, but not all of them have the Accu Trigger, and this is one that does not. So if you're stuck in that situation, whether you purchase the rifle or it's a gift to you or you buy it used, you know, whatever, however you come up with that particular model, then what you're going to want to do is remove the action screws. I thought I had loosened it all the way, but apparently not. So you're gonna to wanna to remove the action screw. So the, the rear screw, right, it's the long one. It's got this little plastic piece that helps hold the magazine in place. Um, 
So that, right, you're gonna wanna remove that. You're gonna wanna remove this front screw. It's the shorter of the two. And then that will allow you to remove the action and the barrel from the stock. Okay, that's, that's a huge <laughs> piece of it. Otherwise, you're not getting to this guy. This is where, this is what you wanna get to right here, okay? Uh, let's see. Yeah, we'll leave it. We'll leave it right here on this side. So, pretty much, stand by. There we go. Uh, this way, you, you guys can actually see what's going on here. So, this will expose the trigger assembly. And what you need to do uh, to make this modification is there is a C clip, right? that holds uh, the pin, actually holds the trigger in place and then it's got a little C-clip retention piece. So you just need to push that off. It doesn't take a lot of force uh, to push that off. I actually like to get a, just a flathead screwdriver that's long enough to cover that distance and then just push on it with a little bit of force and it kind of helps to get over that initial, uh, get around the, the pin there sort of that initial press and then you're able to, because you don't want to lose this piece. You need it to, to do the install, the reinstall. So you, you want to be very careful when you take that off that you don't drop it in the floor, uh, lose it somehow. So that can be a pain in the butt if you end up losing that piece. So you do that, then you push the pin out. That will allow you to remove this trigger, uh, the trigger piece itself, right? This one single piece of metal. Hold on two seconds, stand by. I actually have a I'll show you guys on another trigger what I'm talking about so that way I don't have to pull this one out because I've already done the work on it so this is not an exact copy of what this thing looks like but because this is a Timney trigger but you kind of get the idea of what it looks like once you take that pin out and you're able to pull the trigger out this is this is kind of what you're left with for the most part for demonstration purposes. And you'll notice this big honking spring back here, okay? Look at the difference in the diameter. Yeah, it's almost double uh, diameter in the diameter of uh, this Timney spring here. But, so what you're gonna wanna do, once you pull this out, it has, you see it actually reduces down into a smaller diameter. Now, what I did with this trigger is, I, once I took it out, I actually tightened this spring, right? So I just took it with my hand and turned it to the right, you know, clockwise, lefty loosey, righty tighty, and got it to the point where I could no longer tighten it, okay? I could no longer turn it by hand. The spring was down in the trigger as far as it would go because it reduces down, it's one solid spring, and it goes from this larger diameter down to a smaller diameter to actually fit in the hole. And so I just tightened it up as much as I could. So that way I know, all right, I'm starting from a fixed position because one thing is if you make the trigger modification to the spring and you cut you know, a certain amount off of the spring, well, and then maybe you tighten it down a little bit more after the fact, well, you could be reducing that trigger weight more than you initially wanted or thought, right? So you kind of see what I'm, I'm doing there. That gives you a hard stop. So that way you know, okay, the trigger's not gonna, or the, the spring can't travel any further, so I can't lighten it any more, right? Then, then uh, not necessarily you can't lighten it anymore, but that's, it won't creep down on you right, you can't tighten it anymore. There, there's no wiggle room in that spring once you tighten it all the way down. From there, that's when you're gonna wanna clip off, you know, a, a small section of the spring. This was actually the very end of the spring. So if you guys could just imagine this piece is still coiled on there and connected. This was the end of the spring. And all I did was take some wire some wire cutters um, and, and the spring is, you know, the coils are that far apart, just that's how the spring is. And then I just snipped, so 
whatever that is, maybe two pieces, however you want to call that, two strands, whatever, two coils, however you want to verbalize that. I started at that point, I clipped that off and put the trigger back in and I used a I used a small Allen key, the same diameter as the pin. I just didn't want to put the pin back in place, so I just used the Allen key because I knew I was more than likely going to take it back out and maybe make further adjustments. So I just put an Allen key in there and ran the bolt and used my Lyman trigger gauge. And I went before I did this, I was at five and a half pounds. That was the average. I mean, consistently five and a half pounds is what I was pulling with the factory setting. I cut off this amount and I was down to, uh, I was down to pulling about three pounds, somewhere a little over three pounds, um, which is not, which is a huge improvement. I mean, don't get me wrong, but I wanted it just a little bit lighter. I was hoping to get around two pounds uh, is what I thought would have been a, a really good setting uh, for this rifle. And so I did the same thing. I just repeated the process, took the trigger back out and I cut off just a half a coal more. And I was down to, on average, I'm down to pulling just over two pounds consistently uh, using that Lyman gauge. So, so that's it. That's how you make the modification. It's very easy if you have one of these. Um, that, that's one of the first things I would recommend if you have a Savage Axis non-Accu trigger, go in, make that modification to start with, you don't want to go too far, right? You don't want to have your trigger pull so light that can cause issues in the functionality of it. So don't, that's why you want to start with cutting off a little bit and retesting each time you'd make that modification. You want to verify that's where a, like a lineman trigger gauge really comes in handy or a wheeler or something like that, um, where you can kind of measure the, the pull weight each time you make a, an adjustment. So just keep that in mind. Uh, if you're going in and doing this, but I highly recommend that. That's one of the things uh, on this rifle I think that'll make, you'll see benefit right off the bat from having a lighter trigger pull. Um, for me, at least, I'm just a huge fan in that range of like two pounds, one and a half to two pounds. Another thing uh, that I did is I went in and kind of sanded down a little bit on this barrel channel on this right side here. It was it was really close to the stock, not, not saying it was making contact, or to the barrel, excuse me, not saying it was making contact, but I just wanted to eliminate that as a possibility. Uh, this is supposed to be a free floated barrel, so I wanted to make it that way, and that's, that's what I did there. So just a couple of things, but the main point of the video was how to modify this trigger because not all of them have the Accu trigger installed. So that's how you do it on the non-Accu trigger version. So really this video probably could have been like two minutes there's a, there's a bunch of videos on YouTube on how to do this, but I just figured I'd make my own. And of course, in true Alabama Reloader fashion, I rambled to the point where this is now over 13 minutes long. I appreciate you guys watching the video, uh, checking it out. Just stay tuned. I've, I've got a lot of stuff coming up. I've got some pretty exciting stuff in a cartridge that is absolutely one of my favorite cartridges that I didn't really get into until very recently um and it has turned into just one of my favorites and I'm, uh, yeah i'm going to do a video about a rifle comparison and cartridge comparison coming up pretty soon uh, i think we may have found the perfect all around hunting rifle cartridge combination so i'm excited to share that with you guys uh, don't forget, make sure you're going down to, uh, Mr. Big Guns in Huntsville. Go check out those guys. Go say hey to Matt uh, and his team down there. They do an amazing job, man. Just if, if you're just looking to either like get into reloading or you want to build a custom gun or you just want to go shopping for a used firearm or new firearm, whatever it is, man, those are the guys you want to go talk to because they can cover it all. If you need a suppressor, they've got a, uh, I think it's a Silencer Co. Uh, kiosk in the store, I, just whatever. Those guys can help you out. They're, they're great to work with and deal with. So highly recommend them. They're the one-stop shop, in my opinion, uh, especially locally. Go check them out online, mrbigguns.com. So that's it. That's where we're going to leave it. We'll catch you all next time. Y'all have a good one.